Welcome back to Blender Frenzy. I am Justin. I am excited to start quarantine series level two, finally, after like forever. I've had so many different problems with this, running into so many different issues that I didn't know how to fix, and I finally overcome them, at least for the most part. I've also been struggling a little bit with some health issues and other things, so I do apologize for the long wait, but we are back at it, and this is the end goal. This is what we want to create. You can see this lovely delicious pile of a thousand rolls of toilet paper as you can see ta-da and it's all very beautifully lit and of course you don't have to use the same lighting that I have here but uh, you can use the same techniques to do put whatever sort of lighting that you want um, but you can also uh, adjust the lighting here with our uh, toilet paper rolls and yeah so I will show you um, what we're going to have in store so let's go to our little chart here so level two make a pile of a thousand realistic toilet paper rolls so here are the skills that we're gonna go over basic modifiers which we've kind of already done but we're gonna kind of look at how that works in relation to some more baking um, basic physics of course we're going to use physics to drop a whole a thousand rolls of toilet paper into a pile we've done UV mapping texture baking lighting and shadow uh, but now we're going to do some more advanced stuff because we're going to com be combining UV maps together. We are going to uh, use one for the single toilet paper roll and one for the whole pile for the shadows uh, just to make it more practical because we can't practically make a thousand different textures or materials for each individual roll of toilet paper. Uh, so this is going to require some advanced uh, usage of the nodes setups and uh, texturing and lighting and all of that good stuff and baking. And then we have advanced camera animation. This, I say advanced, it's not really that advanced. It's a little bit more advanced than just doing a, a spinning camera motion around our object. We're just gonna kind of start in the middle and then kind of pull out a little bit, maybe turn it around a little bit. Um, basic color grading, not really. Uh, I have this in here. I might go over this just a bit for some of the options. We might get into some color grading in the future. I just don't know a lot about color grading, but I'll show you kind of how you can tweak the um, more so this is comes in with when we're tweaking the shadows. So what's not on here, what we will cover is some problems that we I encountered and I'll show you here um, when it comes to transferring mesh data. So I'll show you kind of the steps that we're going to go through here. So we're going to um, start by doing some physics here. Let's go ahead and uh, just do this and with this pile. So we're going to use a template, which is uh, a just a cylinder, and we're going to simulate the pile falling down um, like this into each other. And we're using this 10-sided cylinder so that the physics simulation doesn't get too bogged down with too much geometry. So then we, after we have our pile, we're going to freeze it and then use our main toilet paper roll here you can see um, which is this one here this is the one that we created this is the higher poly object that we created and we're going to transfer that into a pile that looks like this so with our pile already set then we transfer everything over and then we combine all of that into one pile and then we'll go over how to change stuff. So let's say you've already combined it into a pile. And then let's say you want to change some of this. Um, I'm just going to get rid of this here. Uh, say you want to change some of these seams here. So we can go ahead and change uh, some seams. We can mark seams. We can clear seams. And then we can take this new data here and then transfer it over onto our pile so that all of them reflect those same seams. Now, I ran into quite a few problems trying to do this, but I've also been able to find some cool fixes and workarounds so that we can do this cleanly and accurately. So having our mesh seams and our, all of our object data the way we want to, we will do another unwrap. And then in order to do our lighting, we have to separate the texture from the shading. So I'm gonna go ahead and disable this and we're gonna come over here 
and then go to our lighting here. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and hide our toilet paper roll. So what we have to do here is we can't use the same UV map uh, for both our texture and for the shadows like we did in the single roll. So in the single roll, we just, use, we just unwrapped it once and then applied our texture and then applied our shadows and then combined those two and it was just fine. But with our pile, we can't do that. We actually have to use two different UV maps, one for the single roll and that's for the texture. So each individual toilet paper roll has the same exact texture. But each individual toilet paper roll does not have the same exact shadow on it. In fact, every single one of these shadows is unique. And so we can't practically have 1000 different textures or materials with the different shadows for each of them. So what we have to do instead is combine the whole pile and use one texture, one or two textures for the whole pile at, for the shadows. And in that case, we need to use a completely different UV map. And so you'll end up having two UV maps, one for the individual rolls and the texture and one for the pile and the shadows. If that doesn't make sense to you, don't worry, it will when we go over it. But this was a pain to figure out. We will also uh, have to uh, te take the, um, you can see here, I've got two different uh, selections for the pile. Um, and that is because uh, the getting these uh, seams to be blended in was a huge pain in the butt. Um, and you can see this seam right here still a little bit. Now we won't be able to get rid of all of them, but we were going to try our best to um, minimize the seams showing, um, and which was really super frustrating, but um, we did it, I think for the most part, I have, I've got a few semi workarounds um, and some ideas that you can play around with to smooth those out. But then uh, once we put it all together, of course, it looks uh, deliciously beautiful. <laughs> I shouldn't probably use the word delicious for uh, toilet paper rolls, but look at that. That is smooth. And of course, uh, we, for, uh, we've got to bake the shadows and stuff for the floor too, but all of this lighting is baked on there. I don't actually have an active light in our scene right now, but that is what it is gonna look like. Oh, and also, uh, of course, just like we did with the single toilet paper roll, we have the shadows uh, separate so that we can uh, adjust those shadows individually, um, make th making them lighter. And of course I gotta change that too for the other selection. So we can make it lighter or we can make it darker. Um, we can add in brightness and contrast to these. Um, so right now, of course, we can also um, uh, do the same thing for um, our multiply here. So that's more something like that. So yeah, but a lot of flexibility and a lot of uh, just very trying to make things very clean and very fast so you could do an uh, camera animation fly through, which is the thing that we're going to end it with and uh, which we're going to do a little bit more interesting. I say advanced camera animation. It's not really that advanced. It's just going to be something where we kind of start in here, maybe uh, like I did before in one of my videos, my thousand subscriber videos kind of maybe start in one of these holes here and then kind of back out slowly with some dramatic music kind of backing out and then kind of maybe maybe I don't know uh, rotating or turning down something like this and then kind of zooming out and kind of seeing everything I don't know we'll we'll play around with it and we'll see um, but that will we'll finish off with that and then that will conclude level two of the quarantine series onto level three where we can do some more camera uh, tracking and um, 
start combining some CG elements with our real time footage. Anyway, I am so super excited and so sorry it's been so long, but I'm going to try to pick up the pace. I've already started recording a whole bunch of videos for the physics portion of this. So that's what you'll see along with this video. Okay, I'm going to stop talking now and let's get started with level two.